If they do that, they're going to be, the two will be very, 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 very tough to beat. Off the window, no. Roberts tried to get it. Shag for the win. Got it. This was 14 points, but he just looked, the way that he dominated the game was in controlling the pace and making smart decision after decision. Call him five, slam it down. Go to the spot before or after. The dream is alive for Houston. Go Cougs! Let's go! Welcome into another episode of Let's Rage Cougs presented by the Saxinian family. This is the original Houston postgame show after each and every single football and men, men's basketball game and emphasis after each and every single one that includes when the score isn't necessarily in favor of the Houston Cougars and boy was that the case in Kansas City for the Big 12 championship final the final score Iowa State wins the Big 12 tournament 69 to 41 in a very very lopsided second half performance in which it did not go in favor of the Cougars but joining me as always Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review and Dayon Dunlap how y'all doing? Doing great, man. You know, like you said, we do LRC after wins and losses. Not often we do after losses, but this is definitely after a loss, man. Kudos to Iowa State. They had a role in the day. Yeah, I'm so, doing good. Oh, my back down. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you definitely, when it came to this game, the Cougars did not have it going, specifically the second half. I think we can all agree they didn't really have it going offensively throughout the course of the entire game. Houston shot just, uh, juice. they're shooting 15 of 56 from the field, 26.8%, and they shot just 4 of 22 on threes. Now, they did that throughout the course of the entire game. The difference in the first half, though, is that they did a good job of being able to get offensive rebounds that turned into second chance points, 10 to be exact, and that's one of the reasons why they were only down 7 heading into halftime, which was something that the Iowa State head coach brought up during his halftime interview with ESPN, and that was a completely different story in the second half only three offensive rebounds allowed by Iowa State and uh, Houston just continued to struggle from scoring in the field that went just 624 in the second half or 25 percent that was really the big difference in the ball game it seemed like every time Houston they were one and done for that stretch in Iowa State I mean like you said Chris kudos to them because they were on it it seemed like during a stretch there everything they threw up went in Iowa State is very similar to Houston defensively. You know, folks need to acknowledge that. Cougars have a hell of a defense. So does Iowa State. But what we saw, a couple things. Juwan Roberts gutted it out in the first half, but he did not play in the second half. His absence was felt. But everything, nearly everything, Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Emmanuel Sharp, tossed up, didn't go in. When all three of them are struggling to make shots, you're going to see offense performances like this. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah, that plus um, turnovers. Houston with 12 turnovers. I will stay 18 points off those turnovers. That's another thing that Houston does well and predicates and uh, predicates themselves taking care of the ball, turning the opposing team them over and getting points off of those turnovers. They weren't really able to do that today. I think only like five points off turnovers. Plus, everything else Chris said in regards to not making shots. And so that's a recipe for a disaster. But I think one of the main things just kind of watching this game is um, watching Jamar trying to overcompensate offensively because Emmanuel wasn't making shots and LJ wasn't making shots. And um, it's tough to do that when when the defense is all loading up to stop mm-hmm. him as well. So Emmanuel, you need him to definitely make some shots. You know, and the Cougs, it took eight free throws. Jamal took two. Emmanuel had none. LJ had none. So not only did they struggle from the outside, sometimes they didn't even try to get to the paint. To, you know, Iowa State does a good job of of closeouts, just like the Cougars do. But we'd like to see Emmanuel get into the paint. Your shot's not falling. There's other ways to contribute to the offense. Break down the defense, penetrate, kick it to you. You're spanning the dunker spot. Things like that. Didn't do it today. This was an awful performance offensively for them. 
Hopefully this is the last one of the season like that, and I'm sure the fans will take it. If this is the last time the Cougs offense struggles like this, but what is it, three weeks from now, we're talking about on what, April 8th? Some way, somehow, this team won that championship. We'll take it. Yeah, that obviously, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. It would have been nice to win the Big 12 tournament championship to have that sweep of both the regular season title and the postseason tournament, but that was not to be. And a uh, great point being brought up for those that are joining us in the comments section, joining us on this Saturday evening. There's a lot of different things that went into down to your point about not really being able to, to turn Iowa State over. Uh, for the game, the Iowa State Cyclones only had nine turnovers, which we talked about it in, during yesterday's show. And obviously, it's been something that's been brought up throughout the course of the entire season. But Houston has been really, really elite at being able to force turnovers, make opponents turn the ball over. Think about the various different opponents when it comes to you know, Kansas. They've turned them over 18 times, both times they played. Iowa State, when they played at Fertitta Center, had a lot of turnovers. Baylor, the list goes on and on, and that just wasn't the case today, to Dayon's point. And uh, that was one of the other big reasons why they were not able to, to score. That 41 points, the most, the lowest point total for Houston under Kelvin Sampson's tenure, according to Joseph Duarte, the Houston Chronicle, and according to ESPN, that's the lowest by a number one ranked overall team since 1982, so not the kind of records you want to be setting, but this was a very, very bad offensive night for Houston as well, and a big reason for that is just because they weren't being able to to start off their offense on a fast break by turning Iowa State over. Well, big reason for it is Iowa State's guards are damn good. That's one of the things we touched on last night. What could, what teams give Houston problems? Teams with multiple guards who can get things done. Keyshawn Gilbert and Tamer Lipsy got things done. Tamer Lipsy outplayed Jamal Shea today. That hardly happens. It may not happen the rest of the tournament. It happened today. Keyshawn Gilbert outplayed LJ. It happened today. Hey, good for them. There's no need for panic right now. My only concern is 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 Juwan Roberts' health status. Because if he can't go, if that leg bothers him and he can't play 30 minutes a game, that's a concern. But team's going to shoot poorly. It happens. I hope this is the last time it happens. If it does, we'll forget about this. No worries. Yeah, not, not really a concern because this is the first time the X Factor, in my opinion, Emmanuel Sharp has – had a game like this. I'm basically going scoreless. He had five points in, in Washington minutes, but it really didn't even impact the game because he's been consistently, like Chris said, being able to find a way to impact the game when his jumper isn't falling, but that being driving, get to the, get to the basket or get to the free throw line and generating those 12 points, 12 to 13 points, like he's average. And so this is the first time that I've seen him have a game like this in complete game. And I don't expect we will see it. Uh, I can't remember. He's had a game like this, so I think it was just an anomaly. He'll bounce back, and I think Jamal will bring what he brings, and LJ will bring what he brings, and we'll be okay. I mean, this was a road game as well. I think that's basically. something we haven't mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was basically a road game. And so Iowa State is everything that, that we've given them credit for, being a good defensive team. But Lipsy had a, a great game. Like Chris said, he definitely outplayed Jamal Shed. And I was having a conversation with Miles before the game started about Lipsy and Jamal is they basically are um, the same player in regards to being what they bring to each team. And mm -hmm. they bring that they can both go head to head. And, um, and I think uh, Lipsy won that battle of the day. And Lipsy is also one of the finalists or top 10, whatever, top 15 for defensive player of the year, just like Jamal. He's 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 a very good guard. And Keyshawn Gilbert has it going right now. Iowa State is a good team. Iowa State, I see a comment from a question from, from CA37. Iowa State is not the new Memphis. And from this point only, I mean, I don't know about how they're doing on Twitter and stuff, but Iowa State fans, they don't talk as much junk as Memphis fans do, and Iowa State wins. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, they've been they, up they have they've more to brag around, on than Memphis does, season, you know. But the Cougar, you get to tell, Jamal was not happy, was disappointed in how he played. It's going to be motivating for them. This was 
a poor performance for the Cougars. But you know what? They'll be number one seed tomorrow in the South region, and they'll get a chance to start over next Thursday or Friday. There we go. Think about that, fans. Going into this game, the Cougs had wrapped up a number one seed. Getting thumped by 28, they're still going to be a number one seed. Scott Doak's comment, he said he felt they were the number two overall. No matter what, today he thinks that the loss they dropped won't be a three four. or four. They won't be a four. Wouldn't, I don't think he's talking about CD. He's talking about overall. Um, yeah, they won't be. They won't be the fourth number one. No, they're going to be right. in the south. And no, no. at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because regardless of what, they're still going to be in the south. It's not like no. Look, if they were the fourth, they'd be they they'd be in, in, in the west. Who would be in the south? North Carolina. North Carolina would go to the south because that's oh, closer to Carolina. True, but mm, yeah, uh, I think heading into the game, top three were pretty they were, much they were locked. Set they were locked in Purdue, UConn, and Houston. Purdue lost in the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament. UConn and Houston both made it to the championship game in their conference tournaments. And uh, UConn might, that they were in a battle with Mark. Well, UConn's going to win. <laughs> they're yeah, up 62 they 52, two minute yeah. 51. So I'm pretty sure UConn's going to be the number one overall seed heading into the tournament. But yeah, I agree with you, Chris, there, that North Carolina's not going to leapfrog Houston. No. So, yeah. Uh, the committee chaired. Charles McClellan said Wednesday, he said without saying, I tried to pin him down, that the three number one C three of the teams, Purdue, UConn, and Houston, were pretty much cemented in. Dan Gavitt said it today. That's not, that's not going to change because the Cougs lost today by 28. Which shows you how awesome their season was prior to today. Mark Jimenez's comment. Uh, there's a couple of interesting comments that I want to bring up. Uh, let's start with... This the EI Crabtree 77 he says this is the second conference tournament championship they've thrown away in a row. Well, I don't know if you could say that they threw away this game. I think I Iowa know. State came up and punched them in the Iowa mouth. Iowa State then, played well. It's the second yes. championship game in a row where the Cougs were down a, a key player. Last year was Marcus Sasson and Jamal Shea was not 100 percent last year. Today, Juan Roberts didn't play the second half, but just add that to Terrence Arsenault. Ramon Walker and Joe Tugler. <laughs> okay. Folks, give Iowa State credit. They are a hell of a team. They will be a two seed, a strong two seed. The Cougs did not play well today. That's the point. It's this is one and done, folks. This is not a series. It's one and done. I'm a broken record on it, but that's what it is. You you hate to have your season end on a game like this. Well, you just can't make shots. You're struggling to make shots. But that's the beauty, and as Andy said, the beauty and the curse of March Madness now. You get rolling, you don't want to care about this. Right, Chris. Um, and, and you post, posted a tweet in our um, group chat that it mentioned um, last champion to at least made it to the semifinals of their conference, and Houston made it to the finals. And so I like the momentum that – they were um, on up until this loss today. They'll continue to ride their momentum, break down some things that they could do better going forward in their next game. And I think this was just a good learning experience playing in the second half, playing without Jay Warner, playing the four guard set, just in case if, if foul trouble, whatever the case may be, or if he isn't 100% going forward, they might um, have to play that. And so, um, it, it is a cause of concern a little bit for me because I think that's one of the ways that we've talked about that Houston can lose, but I have full faith in Emmanuel will step up and Jamal is going to do what he does and LJ is going to continue on the rhythm that he's been playing. And there's not No many, more road games. Right, that too. There's not many other backcourts as good as Iowa State. Okay, let, let's keep that in mind. There's not many backcourts as good as Houston. We saw today two of the top backcourts in college basketball. Iowa State's backcourt won the matchup today. And two of the top defenses. Just as like we talked yes. about Houston's defense, we got to understand that Iowa State's defense is at the same level of our defense. And um, and so we got to give them credit for that. And so they have something to do with Houston not shooting as well. And then with yes. it being 
basically a road game. Those things you, you guys take into consideration. But um, yeah. And Iowa State won't be in the same what region as the as Conference. Conference. Yeah, that I, they won't be. Whatever. I mean, I, I doubt that. I doubt that very seriously because of principles that the committee has. So I doubt there'll be a two in the Houston region. Real quickly, I'd like to thank each and every single person who's taking the time out of their Saturday evening to join us on today's episode of Let's Rage Cougs, presented by the Saxonian family. Of course, big thank you to Steve Saxonian for being the primary sponsor of not only today's postgame show, but he has been the primary sponsor for each and every single men's basketball postgame show for the 2023 24 season we'd also like to say thank you to mike and jennifer Pittman with star pizza for being a sponsor on today's episode of let's rage kooks and they also have a message on courtesy behalf of ryan elvin uh sponsoring star pizza chris you asked for it yesterday it is yes. back today excellent hey ryan elvin how much is that big lunch special at star pizza it's a big 12 bucks what do you get for 12 bucks you get your choice of a big 8-inch New York personal pizza or big 6-inch Chicago pizza, a personal dinner salad, and a big soft drink. Can I get it with a pizza and a salad? It's still a big 12 bucks. Can I get it with a Coke Zero? Yep, it's a big 12 bucks. Even if the pizza is a Starburst special? It's still a big 12 bucks. All that's only 12 bucks? Yep, still a big 12 bucks. Monday through Friday, lunch at Star Pizza. Tell them Ryan Elvin sent you. Uh oh, I don't know <laughs> where Andy went there. Oh, there he's Andy Messi. He's too Big fancy, man. Bucks. <laughs> Big twelve bucks got you, huh? <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to make a call real quickly. Hopefully, uh, with the free delivery, it'll get here within the next few minutes. But back obviously of course big thank you to to ryan elvin and to the Pittmans for being a sponsor of today's episode of let's rage coogs and of course uh last but not least we also like to say thank you to vincent harding for being the sponsor for the ticker that you see at the bottom of your screen on our video only platforms that have the final score of today's game as well as stats following houston's loss in the big 12 tournament finals turning back to the comments thank agent Put it well. You flush this game. Get ready for the dance, and hopefully they don't play till Friday and get some rest. Fair. Mm -hmm. I like this one yep. too. You need to tell, get this in the mic. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, look at that. Rex thirty two. They got a new uh, patron, a new customer. Yeah. He had Star Pizza over the spring break. Awesome pizza. We'll go there more often. Well, I don't know what location he went to, but the one um, on Harvard by um, what's the name of the street? Um, Washington. Been Washington. Yes, Washington, Washington, Washington. Yep. Washington. We went there for the live show. It's a good. It's it. It's got kind of a a homey, old school, um, home cooking feel when you walk in. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives a, a very unique vibe. They have when you walk in. They have a couple of arcade games, and then of course the pizza is the one that is the main event attraction throughout the, all the restaurants and has been, I, I still can't get over the crust every time I have it. Um, whenever they brought it during the Fertitta center post game shows, the garlic, I don't know what they put in that crust, but uh, it was one of the best crusts. Why don't you ask, people. man, maybe not share it with the audience. Maybe you find out for yourself because every time yeah. you talk about that crust and you wonder what's in it, find out, man. Yeah. But it's one of the best crust I've had when it comes to pizza. Uh, he, Rex, I he went to the let one. Me, in let the me do this right here. Let me talk about this one. Everybody share your thoughts on this one. I hear y'all, but this was a historically bad loss. So, but the last part, last time we went down by 28 was during Dickey. I don't recall James Dickey coaching a team of 30 and three at Houston. I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I don't, I'm pretty sure Coach Dickey did not have a team of 30 and three and number one seed in, in the tournament. That's all that matters. Whether Coos lost by one, 18, 28, 38, 48 today. There's still a one seed in the tournament. And there's still 30 and four. I will say that. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that the loss in particular is something that has to worry you at the end of the day. I think, especially in the second half, when Iowa State may went on that run, 
it was kind of evident that it was going to be their night. And when Juwan Roberts didn't play at all in the second half to start it, yeah, the writing was kind of on the wall. I think if, if you're going to be a cause for concern, it's just the – I don't even know if you could call it a recipe, but again, there if Houston struggles to turn opponents over, and I, like you both have said, credit to Iowa State because they do have – an incredible backcourt, very, very high caliber guards, and they just have an overall complete team, and they can match Houston on the physicality defensive aspect of it because throughout the entire game, especially in the first half, it was kind of like there were mirror images of each other. Every time there was a loose ball, a rebound, it was physical. Like they were, they were battling against each other, diving for loose balls, battling for rebounds, and to be fair, like but I felt like the officials kind of let them play, which – I think both yes. teams would take that. Um, that That's something that's a cause for concern in terms of Houston, not, if Houston's not. Hold, slow down, slow down, Andy, slow down. It's not a cause for concern to me because. Not in terms of physicality. but Oh, no, uh, no. I'm, I'm just going to say it like this. There's not many Iowa States in Division One college basketball. Dan, would true. you agree? <laughs> okay. There's not many other teams that can match Houston and be basically, like you said, a mirror image of the Cougars. And That's force so Houston into 12 turnovers and get 18 points off of those turnovers. Houston's one of the better teams for taking care of the basketball, but you give Iowa State credit for being one of the best defensive and forcing those turnovers. So it's give or take. But like Chris just said, there aren't too many top defensive teams like that that we that Houston have to um, worry about. They're better offensive teams. And so different things. I think, I mean, there's th- concerns and some things you could take away and say, Maybe this happened, but you take all the things into consideration, the entire season, what, what's what been going on, and the consistencies within that. And one of those consistencies has been the guard play, led by Jamal, LJ, and then Emmanuel. And I think this is one of the worst games that I've seen from Emmanuel, and he hasn't had that type of game. And I think this, everyone has a bad game. And I'm putting, not putting it all on him, but I think he's such an important piece, and I think – um, like I've said before, he, he's one of the X factors that we really need him to get going because Jamal is going to bring what he, he what he brings. And if he needs to step it up a little bit offensively, he'll try to do so. But he needs those guards with LJ and Emmanuel to be able to hit shots and generate points. And to Deion's, further, Deion's point, the previous two matchups against Iowa State, Emmanuel scored 20-plus. Today he missed his first seven shots. Today was the first time all three, Shed, Cryer, and Sharp, struggled to make shots today. Shots did not fall. Folks, if that happens, and it's not likely, but it could happen in terms, if all three struggle to make shots in a game, it's going to be tough for them to win, just like it would be if Keyshawn Gilbert, Tamer Lipsy, other three guards from other teams struggle to make shots. This is basketball. If your best players struggle to make shots, chances are you're going to lose. But if your best players have it going and are making shots, knocking down shots at a high clip, then chances are they're going to win. That's what this is today. But you saw an example today with Iowa State how the lack of front court depth, especially with J1 not playing second half, that was kind of a sign right there when Juan didn't play at all in the second half. That Coach Sampson, is, well, let's see what we got here. If we make a run early in the first few minutes, good. If we don't, it's okay. We'll come back tomorrow and, and watch your know, watch party, the, the selection show. No, I agree with both of you guys. I, I, the thing I was going to say in terms of concern, and that's probably not even the right way to phrase it, and it's not necessarily the most easiest thing to do against Houston, but easier to say, say than, than do it, but – Hold them, limit them to one shots, and take care of the ball. That's something where maybe potential later down the step when you get into the Sweet 16, really when if you get into the Elite Eight, Final Four, to beat a UConn, potentially if you have to run into an Iowa State. Well, yeah, uh, well one thing we're forgetting teams. is, excuse me, Andy, but Javier Francis did not play well today. Yesterday he did. Yesterday he was great as a one big and the you know one big four guard lineup he's dayon you know he is Emmanuel sharp is a key component x factor 
Jabir Francis is now as well. He's got to play well. He's got to be consistently good. He cannot go up and down with Juwan having problems with the leg, having an injury. Jay has to bring it consistently on both ends of the floor and stop with those, those fouls where he has his hands down and then reaches up. That point is too late. The ref's already going to call that foul. One of those fouls, Coach Sampson told him right after. He's arguing with the ref. And then said, Coach said, you're right. That's a good call. And he said to Jay, Jay, stop putting your hands down. Have them up. That's a bad habit. He has to break that habit. Yes, I agree with you, Chris. He, he's definitely a key piece, and he has to be dominant. And what I mean by that, just dominant in his role in affecting shots, blocking shots, rebounding, and, and just being aggressive. I think his presence, a dominant presence, is kind of what I mean. And and when he has that, it's a, it's a difference defensive anchor with Houston than offensively. When he's catching and finishing and, and finishing with force, I mean, it was different like he was. Um, like he's been throughout the season. So I agree with you, Chris. That's definitely um, another key part today in which their their big man, I played him. And so from, yeah. you know, give credit to Iowa State. I mean, it was basically a home game. And they came out to play, and they played well, and they executed. Andy, yeah, Dan. Kind of, oh, my bad, oh. Chris. Go ahead. I was just going to mention his, how Crabtree brings up for him um, what, what I guess his biggest uh, – what he didn't like was that he didn't feel like UH was competing in that second half. They were frustrated. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, they were frustrated. Shots they make weren't falling. Go back to it. Hilton South kind of sucked life out of them as well. Things that have worked didn't work. It all piled up. It was an awful second half. On to the next. That you know that's, and I we get a chance to hear Coach Sampson's post game comments. I think it would say similar. Second half was was the worst they probably played all year. Shots didn't fall. Defense wasn't good. Iowa State is a very good team. Got to give them credit. Very good team. And very good backcourt. Cougs won't face a team like Iowa State in the first round and probably not the second round. I'm, I'm, a, I'm leery of answering Miss Wanda's question and Rex's question. So I don't know if he should even address it. Uh... <laughs> When does the team return well, to Gabby Lewis? Question, it would probably be tonight, I would imagine. But initially, we, I initially it was uh, Sunday, Sunday morning. Mm, interesting. But that was initially. But Rex's question, I'm not, we're not going to touch it. I think another thing that I've been just kind of hearing with casual fans who kind of watch this game and start following Houston in the NCAA tournament is them kind of saying, well, is this another year where Houston doesn't have people that can get buckets and we have toughness, 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 but we don't have enough people to generate buckets. And that's just general talk that I've seen people who kind of don't really follow Houston all year, but when they get close to the tournament, they kind of watch it. And watching this game, they kind of have those thoughts. So is this going to be another year like that? But what are you guys' thoughts on that? Oh, oh, right after the game. Seth so Greenberg, Jay Williams. <laughs> they brought yeah, that up. It's, it's a lazy narrative. I guess they didn't mm-hmm. watch the second half last night. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, it, I mean, second half last night, they were rolling. Houston's offense was rolling. Especially if you take this second half today where, I mean, let's, let's just look at the minutes. Second half for Houston. Jamal Shedd played 10 minutes. Javier Francis played eight minutes. Uh... Jawan Roberts played zero. Andre Quire had 16. Sharp, 16. Malik Wilson played the entire second half, 20 minutes. So uh, it's not like that's the full full slate of Houston where you're going to see in the NCAA tournament. Um, yet, Chris, like Chris said, that's definitely a very, to steal a word from you, Dan, kind of a casual take with Houston. I think every team has kind of like a weak spot in it if, obviously, if you're going to pick Houston, the offense is definitely the weak spot compared to their defense. Um, I will say, like, today, and so kind of the message we've reiterated over the course of the entire show, 
credit to Iowa State, but if a team can hold Houston to just one shot and done, yeah, that's going to be a good opportunity for them to be able to beat Houston. And then obviously they have to take care of the ball themselves. And again, Iowa State as a team shot 50% for the entire game, 40% on threes, which is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. But uh, this game is just so odd in terms of whenever Iowa State did make that run, it was kind of, like I said earlier, you could kind of tell that Houston was, they uh, they, they were going to finish the game, but I don't think once they, Iowa State made the run, it. they didn't put their full, yeah. Yeah, full effort into it. it. Yeah, you know, they, there was a point probably halfway in the second half, the game was over. Oh, yeah, and, 12 minutes. Yeah, mark. <laughs> the game was over, and if, you know, maybe eight minutes into whatever. Because this is a, a unique scenario. It's rare that a team has already wrapped up a one seed without having to win the conference championship. They really didn't have to win any game in this Big 12. But they did. They got to the title game. Today's second half, they couldn't make shots. The offense was worse it's been all year. I wonder what um, folks like Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams are saying watching UConn and Marquette in the first half tonight. When it's three to two, 12 minutes into the first half. Three to two. Oh, whoa, what? Did, did they say, boy, UConn really struggling? Oh, my gosh. They can't make shots. It was three to two. Halftime, it was 26 24. Any offense is going to look bad when charts aren't falling. That's an that's an obvious take that I say. Just like it's obvious an offense is going to look bad, or look good, going to look good when shots are falling. Shed, Cryer, Sharp, all three of them struggled to knock, knock down shots today. If Stephon Castle, Tristan Newton struggle to make shots for UConn, you know what? <laughs> They're going to struggle to score too. This ain't rocket science. But let's talk about this. Where is the point? Uh, about the home the home crowd for Iowa State. Where is it here? Oh, well, yeah, it yeah, was Rec or Crabtree. There we go. No way a one should be playing a de facto road game. Kansas City is closer to, to uh, Ames, Iowa than, than Houston. At the it's conference, a, it's it's a money it's a money deal for the conference. It's going to be in Kansas City till for the next seven eight years through two thousand thirty one. As long as Iowa State is good, the fans will, will come support their team. Or if Kansas <laughs> or Kansas State had made it, it would have been the same thing for them. It had been it had been different there. It had been full of Jayhawk fans or a Wildcat fans. That's part of it. The only way Houston would have a home court advantage is if the tournament was in Houston, not Dallas, in Houston, not Fort Worth, in Houston. Really, that should be more of a challenge to Houston fans to travel more. Thank if you. Anything. Say that. There you it should be a cry to Houston fans to travel more, show up. Championship game, hey, it's an opportunity. All y'all do is show up and make it a 50-50 crowd. And so, I mean, credit to Iowa State fans for – Having the, the 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 theme and the determination to make that into a de facto home crowd because it definitely was it was a road game and it looked like it you could tell on TV the crowd and everything and so credit to them. Agree and, and, and let's say this. Let's say this. We know the dates of the Big Twelve championship well in advance. Okay, so Coug fans, Coug alums, I challenge y'all. I think we challenge our down said it right there. If you have the means, the time, buy those tickets. Beat our state to the fans to the punch. Buy the tickets. Our state, yes, yeah, it's, it's a quicker drive, shorter drive for them. Okay. But they're there in mass. But we know when, when next year's gonna be. If not, it'll be announced soon. Plan your vacation around attending in Kansas City for the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. Because you know the Cougs going to be in it. <laughs> it's not like only 12 teams go. Every member school goes. Buy tickets in advance. 
and to that point, like I said, Houston's benefited as well in the past. Like think of the NCAA tournament, twenty one, twenty two, and the the Sweet Sixteen and Elite Eight were in San Antonio, and the one seed Arizona was complaining about it being a de facto home game for Houston. He knows about a three hour drive. Uh, it's a it's a non story. It is what it is. Uh, impressive, Craig and kudos to Iowa State because. Uh, who brought it up? They mentioned it. They showed it on the ESPN broadcast where I'm assuming it was supposed to be a a picture or something of Ames and Iowa and then it looked abandoned, <laughs> giving the impression that they all went to Kansas City for the championship game. So uh, give kudos to their fans for showing out. I was surprised when the TV cut. Here we go. Michael Jones. TV showed a picture of the town of names. No one, no cars. People are on the street. <laughs> they all went to Kansas City. Um, I mean, the Power and Light District in Kansas City, it's a fun place. It's a good hangout. It's right across the street from T-Mobile Center. There's a lot to do downtown, right around T-Mobile Center. But let's, let's, you, let's flip the script, Coug fans. Coug's number one seed, Coug's in the South region. Coos get to the Sweet 16 round. Those games, that first game is in Dallas. That's not a far drive, Coog fans. So turn the building red, Cougar red, and then have the opponents, those teams. It felt like a home game. It felt like a Houston Cougar home game. There's so many people here from Houston. That's a perk. That's a benefit of being a number one seed in a region close to you. As opposed to like Carolina, if the number one in the West, they're going out to, I think, uh, Los Angeles, maybe. Cougs in Dallas, there should be thousands, thousands upon thousands of Coug fans in Dallas. We love our Cougs. Let's 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 support our Cougs. Even in Memphis too, it's like those are two familiar sites that Houston fans are accustomed to traveling to. Yeah, I mean we're putting it out there, and and let me be clear: if you have the means, the time, and the money to do it, go to Memphis, go to Dallas, other fans close by, they'll go there. But I'm saying, (laughs) come on. (laughs) Agent, Agent comes. Says, well, you can argue that too. But there's, is there too much to do in Houston that we can't go to Dallas and support our team if they get to the Sweet 16 round? You know what I'm saying? And this is true. Yeah, EI has a great point there. There were a lot of Houston fans there. Just weren't as many as Iowa State fans. <laughs> you know? And, and also, this is Houston's first year in the Big 12. Iowa State's been in since the beginning. So they know. They plan their trips around going to the Big 12 championship in Kansas City. Hopefully, Houston alums will start planning their trips, their vacations around going to Kansas City. This is a start, not an end. Let's put a pin on it right there. We'll take our final commercial break here on Let's Rage Coos. And let's start by saying thank you to Steve Saxinian for being the primary sponsor of today's episode of Let's Rage Coos. Like he has been all season long for each and every single men's basketball postgame show. This is Let's Rage Coos, the uh, original Houston postgame show and the only postgame show ever retweeted by head coach Kelvin Sampson following each and every single football and men's basketball show. Of course, we also like to say thank you to Mike and Jennifer Pittman uh, with Star Pizza for being a, a sponsor on today's episode of Let's Rage Cougs as well. And uh, for bringing you this message courtesy of Ryan Elvin sponsoring or promoting Star Pizza. Hey, Ryan Elvin, how much is that big lunch special at Star Pizza? It's a big 12 bucks. What do you get for 12 bucks? You get your choice of a big 8-inch New York personal pizza or big 6-inch Chicago pizza, a personal dinner salad, and a big soft drink. Can get it with a pizza and a salad? It's still a big 12 bucks. Can I get it with a Coke Zero? Yep, it's a big 12 bucks. Even if the pizza is a Starburst special? It's still a big 12 bucks. All that's only 12 bucks? Yep, still a big 12 bucks. Monday through Friday, lunch at Star Pizza. Tell them Ryan Elvin sent you. 
It's a big 12 bucks. Make sure, <laughs> Chris, I'll make sure to ask Mike what's in the pizza crust. Um, but big thank you to Star Pizza, not only for being a sponsor on today's episode. They've been a sponsor all season long for not only our men's basketball shows, but the football ones as well. So you can never say thank you enough to them and also for stepping up like that commercial for Ryan Alvin as part of the NIL deal that they had with him as well. And of course, we also like to say thank you to Vincent Harding for being a sponsor of today's ticker. Like you see at the bottom, he is a real estate broker and AUH Cougar alum. If you're interested in contacting him, do so at 832-758-2712 for all your real estate needs. And without further ado, let's hear what head coach Kelvin Sampson had to say following Houston's loss to Iowa State in the uh, Big 12 tournament finals. Okay, Houston coach Kelvin Sampson is here. Coach, when you're comfortable, if you could start us off with some general comments about the game. Um, well, first of all, congratulations to uh, TJ. His team, um, they, they, were, they were unbelievable today. They played hard. Um, they played connected. They played, um, shot the ball extremely well. I don't know where they from the three, especially um, uh, um, had some, you know, When we were uh, defending him tough, he still made it. That's what good players do. So, hats off to um, um, Iowa State. I think for all the teams now, it's just a matter of seeing if you can get uh, as healthy as you can and get ready for the um, uh, tournament next week. Tomorrow's select selection Sunday. We'll pick ourselves up. We've had a great year. Um, obviously, 40 minutes is not going to define three months. But um, we'll get some guys... Um, treatment and healthy and get back at it and, and see where they send us tomorrow and be excited about it. Okay, remember, if you've got a question, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Let's go over here on the left. Kelvin, uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. Hey, Blair. Hey, how do you anticipate your guys reacting to this? Um, this is similar to what happened to us at Kansas earlier uh, in the year. Uh, everybody's sign up for this uh, job coaching and playing basketball. You're going you're gonna to have you're going to have moments like this. Uh, and that atmosphere out there was unbelievable. I think that was. Uh, I don't remember Hilton being as tough to play as Kansas City. Now, very, very seldom do you play a, a game, a home game or a road game, rather, uh, in the uh, championship of a tournament. But you know what? Hats off to Iowa State's fans. I, th I think this was a great learning experience for Cincinnati and UCF and Houston and uh, BYU to, to see. I, I've known how great Iowa State, State's fans are for a long, long time. That's not the first time I've lost to them in the championship game. Um, but you know what? Don't lose sight of how good you got to be to get here. There's 14 teams. There's only two teams left. <clears throat> I'm sure people will take their shots at us, and that's okay. Go ahead. But there's a lot of teams would have uh, loved to have been in our spot today playing them. But they're really good. Even when we beat them at our place, I thought they were really good. Um, you know, they, stum they stubbed their toe a couple times, but that's going to happen in this league. So um, our kids will respond, though, uh, Blair. They've got the right DNA. Um, we've got really good leadership. And we've got great kids. You know, we've we've, uh, we've battled all year long. Um, you know, I, I think the uh, there's there's so much good fortune that goes with teams that can stay healthy. You know, and we're struggling with that right now. So we're gonna have to figure some things out. Let's go here on the front row on the left. Will Kunkel, Fox, Houston. Just how did you balance the desire to win and get healthy with Jawan just 13 minutes? And I think Jamal rested about seven and a half down the stretch. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't won these a few times. Um, you know, next week is 
the way, and Iowa State would tell you the same thing. Next week's more important to them than this. But, you know, when you're, you've got a chance to play in front of your 15,000 of your fans, you, you're going to go all out. You know, uh, for us, we would like to have played better today. But they had a lot to do with that. They, they made us poor, play poorly. Uh, we didn't shoot it well. And I thought we got a bunch of really good looks, especially Cryer and Shed. Uh, they were the two shooting most of the balls. <clears throat> but, um, you know, it just wasn't their day. You know, third game in three days, legs, all that kind of stuff. And that's the, that's the advantage of having your fans. They lift you, you know, when, when things aren't going well. Um, but uh, really, really proud of my team this year. Uh, we've had an unbelievable year, 30 and 4. Went in the Big 12, all that stuff is the stuff that we'll hang our ha hats on. But, um, um, you know, the injury thing, there's not a lot you can do with it. I got up this morning convinced that we were not going to play um, uh, J1. And um, John Houston said, well, there's no reason why he can't play. It's not anything structural. It's just a bruise. It's like he got hit. And with the medication that was taken, he felt a lot better. He went through a shoot around. He wasn't limping. But uh, as, as it wore on, you know, this game's not near as important as his health. Um, it wasn't Maul's night tonight. Um, so we'll lick our wounds and get back on the uh, horse and get going again. But I can't tell you how impressed I was with Iowa State. You know, don't, don't think for a minute I'm poor-mouthing us and taking anything away from them. They were great. They're, they're a team that can, uh, they can go a long way. They, 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 can get to, um, they can get to the Final Four. They're that good. Let's go rear to the right. Coach, uh, Sam Lance with Adam Zagori and Zags blog. I'm, I'm writing a little story on Jamal Shedd this week, and he told me whenever you recruited him, you told him that you had two point guards and he was supposed to be the third. What was it about Jamal Shedd whenever you recruited him that you knew he was kind of destined to be that? Uh, talent and leadership. <clears throat> you know, he had, he's a very talented young man. He was from a great family. And he, um, you could tell he, he was used to leading. It was very natural uh, for him. Um, there was a young man I had a few years ago. <clears throat> uh, he's playing for the Rockets now, Nate Hinton. When I recruited him, I said, that kid's going to be our captain one day. He'll be a good captain. And I remember saying that about um, um, Shed. I bet you he'll be a good captain one day because he, he has those uh, traits. What, wherever he goes and whatever he does in uh, life, he'll be successful because he's extremely intelligent. Um, he's got great leadership skills, and he comes from really good stock. Okay, let's go over here on the right, and then we've got another one on the left. Coach Greg Eklund, AP Broadcast. Regardless of how this game would come out, you had mentioned 30-4 and four regular season champion. Do you feel that this team has already earned what it, the top, among the top teams in the country get? As well, I think anybody that wins this league is going to get what it, is going to earn whatever it gets, whether it was us or somebody else. Uh, Iowa State could have easily won this league. You know, we, were, we got very fortunate and won some games. I remember two or three games that went in overtime that, you know, we just kind of gutted it out and found a way to win. <clears throat> but we did, so we get credit for that. Um, but going, uh, the record we had this year in this league was, um, you know, probably not supposed to happen. You know, and if you're surprised, then so were we. We were, we were sitting here thinking we were going to go 15-3 and three in this league. But uh, it shows you what uh, kind of group of kids we have. But we don't have the same team today we had a month ago. You know, that's, we don't have that same team. So we'll, we'll um, get some rest and see if we can't get some bodies healed up. There's probably some feelings got hurt today. But, you know, today was a battle. You know, and we lost it. We didn't lose, we, the war is coming up. You're going to lose battles. You know, <clears throat> everybody in this league loses battles. But uh, we're all refreshed, and we get, get to reset uh, come uh, Thursday or Friday, depending on the, uh, <clears throat> on the um, site that they send us to. But just really proud of this team. You know, um, 
I think I feel better for Iowa State than I do for us. They play great today. Their fans, that, that was an Iowa State moment. That thing was set up for them. You know, uh, in Kansas City, uh, what, what is this place seat? I don't even know. Anybody know that? What is it? Okay, so that means what? Is there 17,000 Iowa State fans today? That doesn't happen everywhere. You know, uh, where was the Big Ten tournament? Where? Um, I guarantee you there wasn't a team there that had 17,000 of their fans supporting a team. Uh, where was the ACC tournament? Usually Greensboro, probably D.C. Uh, why was it in D.C.? What's that geography? <laughs> who's, close, who's closest to there, Boston College? <laughs> huh? I say Rutgers, but they're in the Big Ten, right? <laughs> so, but this is unique. Uh, I think it says a lot about the Big 12, but more importantly, it says a lot about Iowa State's fan base. You know, th their kids were unbelievably jacked. You know, I've, yesterday felt like a fair fight with Texas Tech. Felt like a fair fight with TCU. The other games all felt like fair fights. Today didn't, didn't seem very fair. But again, that's all kudos to Iowa State's fans. That's, they're always going to have a, um, did I see somewhere where they were 5-0 in championship games? Well, correct that, will you? 6-0. and There's a good chance it's going to be 7-0. and Pretty good. <laughs> Let's go over here. Once again, that was Houston Cougars head coach Kelvin Sampson giving all the praise to the Iowa State, Iowa State fans, the shout out, and obviously the Cyclones themselves for putting together the strong performance they did in the championship game. Uh, for me, the quote that stood out to me came early, but 40 minutes is not going to define the past three months for Houston. Agreed. And that's basically my message to everybody who's, who's watching us on LRC and all the platforms. The coups didn't happen today. Credit to Iowa State for part of that. Next. <laughs> as simple as I can put it. Next. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Uh, what I said, what Coach Sampson said, he kind of re-emphasized some of the things I said. It, but yeah, you don't walk away. Um, Thirty and four, all the wins, the will to win, and just, just regroup. But I like his analogy. Like today, we lost this battle, but we haven't yeah. lost the war. The war is still on. So you regroup and get ready. And I, I think the team will be ready. I think they'll learn from this. But like he said, it won't be another game where it's 17,000 <laughs> rooting against you. And part of that does uplift you. You got all those people cheering for you when you, you're you struggling or you have any kind of self-doubt and you hear all those fans cheering for you, the game goes up a notch. And it's not a knock on the conference because it's an economic decision as well. Because you want to have your championships well attended. You don't mm -hmm. want to be in a city where you got 2,000 people in the building. So if you've got a chance for sellouts, you're going to go where those sellouts are, man. I will say the other thing that stood out to me about uh, Calvin's post-game com press conference was the comment that he gave about Jawan Roberts in the morning. He didn't expect him to play, but John Houston said there was no reason for him not to play. It was a bruise. And he started, and they went with him. Yeah, you know, and he also said he's not going to risk a player's health. You know, if John says he could go, John said Juwan could give it a go. They decided to have time. He's not going. He didn't have it today, so they sat him for a second half. That's fine. But think about how far the program has come and evolved. Previous years, if the Cougars would have lost in the conference championship game, there were ch chances their season would be over or going to the NIT. This team lost in the Big 12 title game, and they're still a number one seed. Let's keep that in mind. And Coach Sampson said, when you're in this league and you win this league, you, you earn what you get. And so, I mean, that's something they had in mind in that second half when they kind of realized how the game was going. And, and you wrestled Jay Wall, you wrestled Jamal, and you get ready. I mean, you don't take away, like we just said, the, the rest of the three or four months of the, the season. 
and they're going to figure out where what path they have to take starting tomorrow when the selection show uh, they airs, which will be 5 p.m. Central Time on yes. CBS. Mm-hmm. So Houston won't wait long, won't have to wait long to figure out where they're going to have to be. So let's get into the NCAA tournament. Um, Chris, like you said earlier, you expect them to the top three locked. They're not going to get leapfrogged by UNC. So that would put them in all likelihood in the South region, which again, in first, second round, they have to go through Memphis. Mm-hmm. And then in the, the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, if they do get there, would be in Dallas. Any thoughts about the NCAA tournament? Um, obviously, we, we know the story with Houston all season long. Kelvin Sampson touched on it in those comments that we played just moments ago in terms of the depth. You know, the story has been reiterated. Joseph Tugler, Ramon Walker, Terrence Arsenal all out. They're going to have to do it with an eight-man rotation. And they've shown they can do it. Yeah, they got to the Big 12 championship with that team. What do you guys have to say about the NCAA tournament run? Because now it's it. It's now six it's more wins. Done. It's yep, six more wins, <laughs> yep. or the season's over. A couple of things, real quick, to just contrast success Houston has. We're talking about, and there's some folks who are poo pooing what happened today. Texas Southern tips off their game against Grambling in 13 minutes. TSU has to win that game to get to the tournament. Okay, they have to win that game. Houston is a number one seed in spite of losing by 28 points today. But did y'all notice during the broadcast today and yesterday, Fran Priscilla said it a couple times, there's a chance Ramon Walker might be back. Y'all catch that? He said it a few times. I don't know. I mean, the... Window for him coming back was like three weeks, three to seven weeks. We're getting close to three weeks. Yeah, that would be a quick turnaround. I don't know. A really quick turnaround. But, friend, he, no he said it more argument. than once. And I was like, okay, friend, someone's telling you that. But he said it more than once during the broadcast of the game. So if he's healthy, and I said, you know, said it before, if John Houston believes he can play and clear Ramon to play, his presence will help. I'm not expecting it. So the Cougars have to do with what they have. And they'll give it their best. That one 16 seed matchup, if it's Thursday or Friday, I don't foresee that 16 seed beating Houston. Okay. Then we'll go focus on round two. Let's take a one round at a time. Yeah, I think just looking forward to the tournament. I think um, the guard play is essential. Leading start just starting with um, the leader Jamal Shed. I think um, he'll hopefully he'll be well rested. His experience throughout all his years, all the tournament his experiences he, he's had, I think has primed him for this moment. I look forward for this team going on a long run. But like Christian said, one round at a time, man. I, I'm ha- I have the same expectation as KG to get that first win against the 16 seed, whoever that may be. And ultimately, we think, well, from my perspective, this team's going to go as far as Jamal Shedd and Jawan Roberts can take them. Now, obviously, LJ Cryer, Manuel Sharp, they're all X-Factors. Javier Francis, um, like we brought up today. But it, it starts with those two, and everyone else will follow. And I think... The, the last couple of games has definitely shown how valuable, how crucial really Juwan Roberts is to everything that this Houston team is trying to do. Agreed. And it shows you how important he is and how important he's become because early in his Houston career, that was not the case. One thing he brings um, along with his rebounding and toughness and leadership is uh, when the game slows down and the jump shots aren't falling, it's a low post threat. Someone you can throw the ball down to on the post, and he's developing to a reliable score, someone who can force a double team and open up and get even easier shots for the perimeter. And so he's very valuable in, in many ways, and I think they definitely need him to be healthy as he can be to give all that he um, does give for Houston. And that that's the thing with him out in the second half, 
Coach Sampson tried to get Damian Dunn some mid post post options. But you know, as Coach says, Damian was kept pump faking those molecules. Just shoot the ball, man. Stop pump faking air. <laughs> yeah, I was they was doubling a couple times on the post ups too. Which is good because you do that, then you should kick it out and get open looks, mm-hmm. which they did and just didn't and didn't make them. Well, with that being said, that's pretty much going to do it for today's episode of Let's Rage Cougs. Once again, we'd like to say thank you to Steve Saxinian for being a primary sponsor of this episode. A big thank you to Jennifer and Mike Pittman with Star Pizza for also being a sponsor on this episode. And of course, last but not least, we also like to say thank you to Vincent Harding for being the sponsor on the ticker for today's episode. Once again, the final score from kansas city the houston cougars fall in the big 12 tournament semifinals 69 to 41 the iowa state cyclones beat the cougars and our big 12 tournament champions and uh, like we mentioned selection show selection sunday will be tomorrow we'll find out exactly where houston has to go through with the pass and more importantly what teams will be in their region and they're going to have to go through if they indeed want to make another run it's officially here the best time of the year march madness the ncaa tournament and the cougars it's six six more wins that's all that matters at this point now that's the goal to get six more wins without getting a loss and it'll culminate april 8th potentially for somebody april 8th in the championship game from Arizona. Chris, I'm going to toss it over to you. Any final thoughts you have on this game? And where can people find you, of course? Well, one thought is the selection show watch party is a private event. Someone posted information on it. Shouldn't have. I don't care what you try to, how you try to clean it up. Shouldn't have posted it. But it's a private event. I think it's a fail. I think Houston should have had it at Peter Center for the fans to come cheer on the team. But it's done. It's done. It's, it's a private event. Thank you, everybody, as always, for your your questions, your comments on this edition of Less Rage Cougs, the original post game show for Houston men's basketball and Houston football. Follow me on the platform, social media platforms, Houston Round Bar View on YouTube, Threads, TikTok, Instagram, and Spoutable. And we'll see you Thursday or Friday. And always remember. Since 1994, the Houston Round Ball Review, local name, global perspective. And like Chris just said, we appreciate everyone who joined us here on Let's Race Cougs. Numbers continue to climb. And as always, we continue to grow. We've been at it for a while with the original post-game show for all Houston athletics. And so if you're interested in being a sponsor, Hit us up on the email. Let us know we had to show you analytics to back up um, how much we have grown and continue to grow. And um, I'm looking forward to the NCAA tournament. I think Jamal Shed is primed to lead us on a long run, and I'm excited for this team. And so the casual fans have been watching and just like, oh, this game is, a, is another game of Houston. Just no one to get buckets. This game was anomaly. I'm I'm excited for LJ and Emmanuel. J1 and the whole team. I think this team is primed to have a will to win, and they will win. Um, I'm excited to see how far they go. As always, man, go Cougs.